This video is to show an illustration of centronuclear myopathy as an umbrella term, an overarching term that includes within it a number of other myopathies. So a myopathy is a muscle disorder and centronuclear just means that on biopsy the nucleus, the DNA, etc. within the within the cell is located in the center of the cell when they look on a biopsy. So that makes it a centronuclear myopathy. But within centronuclear myopathy there are a number of categories or subtypes or smaller groups within that terminology. The first of those, going in order of when they were first discovered, the first of those is X-linked myotubular myopathy, sometimes abbreviated as MTM for myotubular myopathy or XLMTM for X-linked myotubular myopathy. This is a problem with the MTM1 gene causing a problem with the protein myotubularin. The next to be discovered was autosomal dominant centronuclear myopathy. Here the affected gene is called DNM2 and it affects a uh, protein called Dynamin2. The next one that came along after that in discovery was uh, the RYR1 gene which causes a problem you know, with the ryanodine receptor 1 and this can be autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive and we can address what all of that means in other videos if need be. Uh, and the next one that came along after that was uh, an autosomal recessive form of CNM uh, called uh, problems with the BIN1, B-I-N-1 gene causing uh, problems with uh, amphifysin 2. And the most recent of these at the time of this video is the autosomal recessive form called by, caused by the TTN or Titan gene causing problems with the Titan protein. Uh, and that has just recently been reported uh, in uh, abstract form. Uh, and there are still a number of the genetic uh, specific causes of centronuclear myopathy that are currently remaining unknown. Um, so you can see here that uh, really what we have w is an umbrella term, centronuclear myopathy. Sometimes people will even make it plural and call it centronuclear myopathies to, uh, to uh, make clear the point that there's a number of different subcategories within here. They share the common feature that all of them have the centronuclear pattern on muscle biopsy, meaning the nucleus in the center. Um, but genetically these are different, which means they have different patterns of inheritance. Uh, in, and also the proteins that are involved are different, the genes that are involved are different. Uh, so there are some, uh, some similarities and some important differences as well. Uh, it's very, very important for families that are affected uh, to find out which specific type of centronuclear myopathy they have that really can only be accomplished currently by genetic testing. So after a biopsy the, uh, that shows centronuclear myopathy, the logical next thing to do is to pursue uh, genetic testing which can be done you know, typically from a simple blood sample but there's even other ways to do that uh, to show which specific subcategory and that's really important to know in terms of um, you know, family planning and letting relatives know what uh, what their risks might be of being carriers uh, or knowing what associated medical conditions might be involved. There may be some things that are, uh, that are uh, more common complications in one category of centronuclear myopathy uh, more so than in another, so it's important to know which uh, subcategory uh, you or your family are in. Okay, and that's just uh, a quick video showing again the umbrella term centronuclear myopathy.